what I love about you know having a 4x4. It's such a, a passport to freedom. You go out into nature, and it's just like this incredible, deep breath. It's that unexpected that always keeps me going back. for months to get to a beach and we did get to a beach last night we finally got here and we we're like this is awesome and this morning we wake up we had a slow start this morning on purpose trying to catch up on sleep and we were woke in our tents by this odor and this odor up is a dead dolphin just right over the edge of the beach here and I am currently downstream of this rotting, blackened dolphin. <laughs> it's so beautiful. But yet it so beautiful, oh, but so smelly. It's so smelly. <laughs> Our morning beach conundrum required a creative solution. This is the solution right here. Essential. You grab cedar wood oil and rub it on your upper lip. You put that all over the ear. Here, go for it. Ready? Quick, quick. Quick, 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 quick. Oh, you're plenty good now. Holy, you dab that. I did. <laughs> that was a finger lift. <laughs> With our truck's power steering needing some repairs, we were dead in the water. Today we've got to run into town, pick up a hose, a piece of power steering hose from Tacoma. We lost a uh, low pressure power steering hose last night in our in the sand. This can be a quick, easy fix once we find a piece of hose. So it's Sunday, hopefully there's a hardware store open. As we prepared to make our way to town, some of our guts started to churn. You're not looking too hot, is he? <laughs> oh, look at that walk over there. It wasn't from the stench, it was something worse. Feeling uh, mediocre. You're zigzagging a little there. I just know. If I smell that freaking dead dolphin one more time, I'm gonna probably lose it all. <laughs> Feel better? Our fish tacos from the night before that Kurt and I had so boldly smothered in a squeeze bottle sauce that most likely had been sitting out in the Baja sun all day is our prime suspect. <laughs> How's it going? I've lost five pounds this week. Nope, just this morning. <laughs> it's a new weight loss plan I'm working on. You're in full evacuation mode. Totally. There is zero storage at this point. <laughs> Kurt! To the others, our condition offered some comedic relief to the overall situation. You gonna make it? You gonna make it? Oh. <laughs> Let the demons out, it's okay! Matt, sometimes you wonder if you're gonna go both ways when you're in the motion there. <laughs> Alright, that'll do. And now for the other. Now with the other guys in town, Kurt and I did what we could to recover in the shade. Scott took the opportunity to hang out with Kyle. How many seashells will you see, see today? My name is Kyle Gunnerson. I'm approximately 27 years old. When I was younger, I grew up in Russia for around three years, and my family we traveled a lot. So I got really used to different cultures um, and moving a lot into different situations and 
being in strange environments with people that you may not understand their language or anything, but that became comfortable to me. And so inside me, I feel like there's always this itch of just wanting to travel. I am married to my wife, Molly. We've been married for about four years. Uh, in the, when we were first getting married is when, we, when I first met Scott and Rhonda, and they were our marriage counselors. And so obviously getting to know them a lot more in that period of time, that short time of life was really important. And we just fell in love with them and their family. And then through them, we got to know the, their community of like Clay and Ty and Toby. Kyle's interview was cut short by the persistent exorcism oh of food poisoning. <laughs> oh. Oh. You know what I need? So you're back from the bathroom. A Red Bull. <laughs> Clay, you need a Red Bull too, buddy. Kurt was quick on the mend. I continued to battle it out. Right now. <laughs> that's what I feel like. And sometimes that's the best medicine. But Clay, you're not mentally prepared. Oh yeah. I'm gonna sit in the truck. Found my happy place, which is no longer the beach. <laughs> <laughs> With a new hose in hand, the guys go to work on the repair. Low pressure line. Did you find everything you need? In we town? did. We got everything we needed. The guys were very helpful, and uh, thankfully their English was better than our Spanish. <laughs> um, yeah, so we're set. We got new hose, new clamps, new fluid. Uh, we're good to go. We're gonna be up and running here in a few minutes. With the truck up and running again, we rolled out to make way to a special meeting. We are headed to Ivan Stewart's playa. He's a basically the Iron Man of the Baja 1000. I'm still in pretty tough shape. Not the condition you want to be in before meeting a legend. <coughs> Sorry about your lawn, Ivan. <laughs> Just find a nice flower pot or something. <laughs> Pick up a flower puke. <laughs> <back. laughs> I'm just gonna have to suck it up and pretend that nothing was wrong. You know, play it cool. I'd be happy. Here we are, Ivan Stewart's house. Let's just hope he's home. Ivan wasn't home, so naturally we snooped around. Then we made ourselves at home on his front porch. This is Ivan Stewart's porch. He's not here. This TRD Pro Tundra's here, but he is not here. But we're here, and... It wasn't long before a blonde-haired wild man came sliding into the drive. Ivan, the Iron Man Stewart, stepped out of a dusty buggy and welcomed us in. Yeah, I have toys, and I have my kids and grandkids down. Like, yesterday, here. Wow. He wanted to show us what he was currently working on in the garage. It may not be what you would think would be in this guy's garage, but what I took from it is that this guy still has a youthful love for racing and all things off road. A little, little 1600? 1600, yeah. Fun? Yeah, yeah, you'll be fine. Back inside, Kurt is getting a few racing pointers. Well, you, did you get tired in your race you did? Oh, absolutely. You know how to wake yourself up? Oh. It was legal too. I mean, just a super simple. When you start getting tired, you take that little gas pedal and you just keep pushing it down. And you hold it on the floor. <laughs> I like the, it. Ball, the longer you hold it down, the, the faster you go, the bigger your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> you, won't, you won't go to sleep. <laughs> is, I'll have to give that a try. Nobody's trying that on this I don't trip. Know, we'll we'll give good. that a try. <laughs> how many times have you done the race? Well, the Baja 1000. 30, 30 times. Oh, all, so of, all, of, all of them were solo. Oh, no, no, all of them, the Baja 2000, I had a... When you guys went to La Paz, then they turned around and oh, drove yeah, back. Yeah, yeah. yeah, try that. Oh. I was lucky enough to win three of those overall, uh -huh. and then 17 Baja 500s overall. Okay. So most, most of my claim, claim the fame came from the Baja 500. Then camping advice started landing on the map. right there. But that's a beautiful little spot. If you guys want to go down and then, and then Coco's, and then you, tomorrow morning you and I had to step outside and take care of some business. And then again on the way back in. Awesome. Here. 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 
invited back to this place. Yeah, it's, it's, it just glad it landed in the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> so we're okay. Should I go start the car? Remember the day? Clay destroyed Ivan's bathroom. <laughs> well, they can't ask to meet a cooler guy. I mean, talk about a man who knows what he loves and loves what he does. A guy who found out how to make a passion a lifestyle. We appreciate how real Ivan was and how down to earth he is. You always tell friends when they leave, you always tell them the same thing, drive careful, you know, yeah, be yeah. careful. I say, screw it, have spin a Brody today. <laughs> <laughs> Not tomorrow, but today, spin a Brody, get a ticket, you know, and you know, burn the tires off that yeah. thing. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm kidding, you guys got too far to go. Yeah, we got a long drive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, when you get heading back, you can spin yeah. a Brody. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. All right, good. you guys. Have a great All day. Right. Good luck. Thanks, yeah. All right. Thanks, <laughs> As we drove away, our radio chatter expressed a common hope between all of us. We just all just want to keep it real, like Ivan. Hey Kurt, so you met one of your heroes in life I today. I did. I was able to meet Ivan the Iron Man Stewart. How was that? Fantastic. He was a super authentic guy, took us right into his home, made us feel at home, and told us race stories, and gave us the device for our trip. A couple hours later, we found ourselves camped in a small cove. As I lay in bed, I find comfort in hearing the guys talk and laugh. The crew let Kurt and I rest through mid-morning. Definitely on the mend. Slept for about 12 hours last night. My soreness is starting to go away. The more water I get on board. So then good to go. The coastal air was wonderful. The tide was out and the view majestic. Our travel groove was on and things are feeling natural. We have definitely settled into the journey. Not far down the road, we cross the final stretch of the ever-growing pavement in Baja. Soon this road will become all pavement and it could be considered somewhat of an end of an era. The wildness of Baja is slowly being tamed. We strolled into Coco's Corner, a notorious stopping point that equates to something out of Burning Man, an eclectic array of randoms placed with care into a scene of wonderment. It's all just kind of weird, but yet somehow makes sense. We equate it to Alaska's Chicken Saloon, just Baja style. Coco came here by wheelchair during a simpler time. In his heart, he carried a simple vision. What was the idea? What did well, you the want idea to do? Coming here I look around here, the first time coming here, 1986, I look around my car. Well, one day, this boat coming here to the 1,000 pounds. Uh -huh. Here I told my friend, and I said, uh, one day I open it here, this boat is a lot of traffic, a lot of traffic. And people know me, and they go, hey, well, let's go and pop a phone and go over there. And play for a sleep, take a shower. Coco is known for his generosity in the midst of what most of us would consider to be nothing. The road out was awesome. True Baja bliss as we made our way south, crossing the Baja border from the state of Baja Norte and to Baja Shore. Rolling over from Baja Norte, Baja North, to Southern Baja, a new state. Okay, here we go, getting sprayed. <laughs> oh, you can't really tell, there but... There we go, we just got tuberculosis sized. Is everybody tuberculosis free? My undercarriage is tuberculosis free. Oh, no. We need to make some miles, so in the morning, after making a simple camp, we push on. Load up. So we just came over um, a little mountain range and saw the ocean right here to our left. And the roads were unbelievably well maintained, which was surprising to me, but really, really pretty. And we're gonna roll in and grab some lunch. Kyle's gonna get us some food and we're camping 
uh, out in, I guess, kind of a cove down here. I don't remember the name of it, honestly, but really excited to sleep by the ocean again. Last night was unbelievably different than the night before and the night before that. It was, it's been progressively better. Kind of looks cool. I remember here. This is cool. As we diverted into Santa Rosalia on a restock mission, we strolled by an interesting church and we hopped out to investigate. The church behind me was designed by the great famous Eiffel of Eiffel Tower fame. And a French miner here in this town of Santa Rosalia wanted a church so badly for his men, he ordered this. It literally was put on a boat and shipped over here in the late 1800s and uh, built and blessed in its current spot now and is still used as an active church. You just never know what you're going to come across sometimes. The little found details of a place or a historic event is really one of the best things about travel. With our miles behind us, our tires rolled onto the beach at the Bay of Conception. A bit road weary, we made camp at the water's edge. A long day's reward of a frosty Mexican beer was at hand and the sound of the waves took the rest of the day away. Feeling the pressure of an upcoming ferry schedule, we continued south towards Cabo San Lucas at the end of the Baja Peninsula. Along the way, we saw some of the most incredible vistas of the saguaro cacti. Saguaro live as long as 200 years and is only known to exist in the Sonoran Desert. They grow their first arms at 70 to 100 years and are only considered an adult at the age of 125. Just think of what they've seen. Here we are. Time for me to face some fears. We got about an hour long video we gotta watch and then we're gonna go scuba diving this morning. First time ever, pretty fun. The video was a bit of a joke as it cut out from major portions, important portions. But anyway, while the guys watched, I roamed around and filmed everything that makes Toby nervous. Before long, we found ourselves on a boat. I'm used to snorkeling, this is a new, whole new world for me. We made our way to the nearby dive site. Everyone was excited. I can't move right now. I feel like he overestimated <laughs> Toby seemed the most unsure. We took the plunge, and soon we were all immersed in the new world. We all tested basic skills and then went exploring. It was awesome to be diving and doing something so cool with your friends. It's an experience that we can all share now. Oh, that was pretty awesome. It took me a little bit to adjust to get my ears in place, and then after that, it was cool. I, I mean, I've, I've snorkeled before, and I, I, I just kind of triggered off. Oh, it's kind of the same thing. You're just deep, diving deeper. Yeah. Oh man, it is weird. <laughs> I told them, I'm like, I told them, my heart was going. <laughs> Back on the boat, we headed further down the coast. Kurt and I had one more opportunity to log another dive. Kurt and I, since we're certified divers, we're able to do one more dive today. And uh, we're gonna hop out right here. This is the end of the Baja, and we're gonna be able to swim or dive. We're gonna go to about 50 to 70 feet, swim along this outer edge, along the outside of the most southern point rock where we get to swim around. Yeah, so this should be a pretty exciting dive. And it's pretty cool to dive at the geographic bottom of Baja. The bottom. <laughs> the, the bottom. The very bottom. This is the, the last rock of the peninsula. 
So we're gonna check it out, see what it, uh, see what's hiding down there. Once in the water, the dive was immediately rushed. In an attempt to keep up and start my descent, I failed to clean my goggles, and fog up was immediately an issue. The current was strong, the strongest curtain I had ever dove in. Constant buoyancy and forward kicking was critical. The demands of the ocean and the constant clearing of my goggles was consuming my air. Halfway into the dive, I couldn't take it anymore. I motioned my dive partner, Kurt, that something was wrong. He stayed next to me as I removed my goggles and my regulator to lick the inside of my goggles in an attempt to keep them from fogging anymore. This is one of the scariest things for me to do, especially 70 feet underwater. But training took over and I was successful in the maneuver. My goggles were slightly better, so I reoriented with my compass, found our somewhat aloof guide, and followed his lead. It wasn't long until my air gauge indicated that it was time for me to make a 10 minute safety stop and then surface. After notifying my guide of the condition, he proceeded to swim off. Not sure what to do, I followed for far too long and before I knew it, my air was critically low. Only a couple minutes remained before I'd be forced to surface, safety stop completed or not. The current ripped us up and down and finally we had the clear to surface from our guide. I surfaced with less than 100 pounds of air, seven times lower than my average surface gauge reading after completing a dive. <laughs> Once on the surface, the guys informed us that during our dive, a humpback whale had passed directly overhead. They think we're fooling them. It just so happens that Clay and Kurt are down around this rock, literally at the moment the humpback whale has passed. A baby and two, and a, and a, I don't know, I guess another frog. I don't know, uh, two big ones? No, I that's one of the coolest things that can ever happen while you dive. It just happened without us knowing. Wow! Turn them into the dive site. Turn them in there. Wow! Back at the shop, Jeff lent me his ear and attentively listened to me vent about my foil dive. The sign of a true friend. So, and then I finally got the current figured out. I mean, I learned a lot on this dive. Yeah. I look back on that dive now and consider it one of my most important dives to date. I just learned so much from it. We hit the road that night, moving north towards La Paz. Our final night in Baja was everything you could hope for. An amazing beach, cooking amazing food, all while laughing about the day's adventures and mishaps with your best friends. Life doesn't get any better than this. Being in the Baja has shown us a new perspective of Mexico. It's one of the gems of the world. It's sometimes hard to express adventure. Right now, at this moment, and on this beach, it's a feeling of pure freedom that's barely able to be contained in the chest. It's an addicting feeling you can never have enough, and you're always looking for more.